So, hello everybody, and uh, I'm making this to really Elizabeth Elijah uh, and her group um, because somebody let me know that Elizabeth, you were saying that you asked Jesus to do this with my wreck. You know, I have to really feel sorry for you. I really do. You, you take all of this glory upon yourself when Jesus, the true Jesus of the Bible, the Son of God, would not even listen to you anyway if you really had asked and I believe you really did because I, I know people's told me that you've been praying for me to get cancer of the breast or cancer of this or cancer of that you've been praying for my death for so long that I think that you are so obsessed with it that when something natural comes along and happens to me you got to take the glory for it but you know what? I feel sorry for you because you're blaspheming Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, when you do that. Because, see, he does not listen to prayers that are amiss, that are so personal, wanting harm and hurt on other people. Because he wants us to forgive our enemies. He wants us to pray for our enemies. If they're hungry, he wants us to feed our enemies. If they need clothes, he wants us to clothe our, clothe our enemies. But we know what you have done. I mean, when you left Chuck up there in... in uh, the wilderness at a filling station in Alaska in the coldest part of the winter to die. We know what your content of your heart is. It is pure evil. It's not righteousness. I feel sorry for you, Elizabeth. Because all the prayers that you have prayed against George C, who you hate, me, whom you hate, and others here on the internet, and you pray, have your people to pray for our death. Y you do that. Don't you understand that those curses that you pray on other people can always come back on you guys and you, Elizabeth? I pray for your soul's sake that you repent and get saved because we are in the last days and you are not the bride of Christ. Jesus won't have a bride that is deformed. Her clothes are spotted with sin and disease of hate and disgust. He's, he's, you're just not part of the bride. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't become part of the bride if you seek forgiveness. I don't know about George C. or the rest of them, but I can, I forgive you. I will. Because, see, I don't want a curse to be put upon me because I want to be stubborn and not forgive you. If you ask for it. I would forgive you for the glory of Jesus Christ and what he did for us all. Don't you understand why you're sick half the time? Why... The things that are happening to you physically happen to you because of this. Now, when you pray curses on me, I'm blessed. I, you know, I didn't even get hurt in that car wreck. 
The worst that happened was my car got banged up, and the insurance is going to pay it totally off. They're going to total it. One debt, praise God, is going to be paid off, and I don't have to pay for it. It'll be gone. Maybe that's what God wanted in the first place. Wanted me out of debt. Because it is time to get out of debt, people. Really, seriously. We're in the end days and much is going to be coming and happening in these end days. So, he wants us to get out of debt as fast as we can. Well, I hadn't planned on a wreck, but yet um, there's something wrong with the car. The engine, um, uh, quit right in the middle of the highway. It quit. Like the GMCs, they've got a big recall on GMCs, and there's some lawsuits going on on the GMCs because of the motor. So, uh, not only is my insurance going to pay the car off, Toyota's going to take care of me. I'm not sure yet how much money I'm going to get, but I'm going to get some money, substantial amount of money. That's a blessing, oh my word. Because they consider it their fault because of the engine. Now that's a God blessing right there. Wow. I may be able to pay the pickup off and be paid off. Or I may be able to go to Israel because I met two people from Israel at the mall the other day when I was up there. I, was, I went up there to get some. They had a sale on glasses. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to get... Um, you know, I, I, I've got glasses here. Well, I thought if I go up there at Sears, they've got, I can get two sets of glasses for only $99. And I was thinking, hmm, that would give me two extra pairs because I'm always losing my glasses. <laughs> but I'll go up there. And, and it was like a pointed time with God. You know, every God has appointed times for us all to meet certain people at a certain time. And he rearranges it for it to happen. This man and woman was there, and we were talking. And I, I let them know I'm a Jew. And, and we were really talking and discussing, and I was quoting scriptures out of the Bible and things. And the woman becomes so, and the man did too, but she becomes so excited. She's, and 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 they gave me their address over there in in Jerusalem because they live in Jerusalem, and she says, "Oh, you must come. You must come to Israel. What you are telling us, you must tell them. We have people over there. You must talk to. You must." come to Israel and we'll arrange a meeting and you can tell them the things that God is showing you. They need to know. They need to know now. There are some people already over there that are talking about this. But you put it in a way that we know you are telling the truth. That God is speaking through you to us. And you've got to come over there to tell other people. Well, I'm praying. I, I'm just going to say this. I said, Father, because he moved up on me, and I told him, I said, well, if it be God's will, next year, on the last blood red moon, on Tabernacle, if it be God's will, I will come to Israel to be there during this season. And I will talk to the people that you want me to talk to. 
Because I like I told him, I said, something's coming to Israel Major. It will be so astonishing. It will be jaw-dropping astonishing. Well, we sat there and we talked for about four hours, even to the point that Carl called and wondered, where in the world you women are? We're up here at the mall talking to two Israelite people from that's flew in from Israel. And we're here talking to them. But I'm feeling strong that next year, around the Feast of Booths, I am to go to Israel. I don't know what's going to happen. But you know, it's His Word and it's His people. The people that teaches replacement theology is really silly. God has never replaced Israel. He won't replace Israel. He comes back to Israel. And it's getting to be their time, their season here on earth for His glory. So all I can say other people pray pray for me pray for the finances to go and and Tina will be going with me the two of us will be going over there uh, the two Israelite people or uh, they're Jews that lives over there will be getting a place for us to stay A God thing. I have their address and everything. And no, I'm not one of the two witnesses, so let's not start that nonsense. Elijah and Enoch are the witnesses. Maybe I get to be over there and see them come in out of the desert and meet them. Ooh, wouldn't that be awesome? But I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly why I, I'm feeling strongly led to be there at the fr last blood red moon, the super blood red moon, and why it has to be in Israel. Why, well, I know why God wants to me to, to speak with them and tell them of his goodness and his love and his mercy and what is about to happen to Israel. I, I know that. That's God that's wanting to do. But I'm putting that out, out there. So, um, people, just, just pray. And I, I, I'm asking you... Uh, to pray for Elizabeth, really, 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 really. You know, she is a human being. She has been connected to the evil powers so for so long that she does not understand who possesses her. But if we all begin to pray for her, she can be delivered. Don't let your hurt feelings or your anger or bitterness to her rise up against you and get a bitter root because then that's your destruction, not hers. And we don't want her destroyed. We want her to come into the fullness and the likeness of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And not be destroyed in the pit with all the rest of the evil people. And she has many followers that she has deceived that pray the same way she prays. And they need to come out of this prayer of bitterness and anger and hate. We can't do that. We cannot walk in the road of righteousness and the road of evil at the same time. God will not permit it. He won't come in and live, and neither will the Ruh Kadesh, the Holy Spirit, live within a house 
that maintains evil spirits like this. They have to be cast out. They have to be. And we must start praying for her. It's been a long time that I've asked people to join together in honest prayers seeking for these evil entities to be cast out of Elizabeth and her group and the righteousness of the Holy Spirit, the Ruh Kadesh, enter her and that she be forgiven of her sins that she has done. She has a deep sexual appetite that needs to be cast out. She has a deep seed of hate and bitterness that needs to be cast out. She has a seed of unforgiveness in her that needs to be cast out. She has a seed of pride within her. That's why she makes these statements. Jesus does what I ask him to do. No. It's a seed of pride of Satan that needs to be cast out. If she has not got these things cast out of her and her cleaned up, when the Antichrist comes, she will be deceived and she'll end up taking the mark of the beast and working with him. More than likely putting many Christians into prisons to die. We cannot afford to let Satan win any more people. We can't afford to people. We cannot afford to let our own self get in the way of, oh, I'm hurt. She said bad things about me. Oh, whoa, woo, woo. Satan says bad things about us all the time. We must forgive her and pray for her salvation. So, that's what we need to do. Oh, I'm so sure some of her co-heads will come back and try to say some mean things about me. But when they do, put your hand upon the screen, upon their face, and touch it and begin to pray and cast out the evil spirits. That's what I'm asking you to do. For the glory of Jesus Christ and our Father, Yahweh. And I'm, I wasn't hurt. I wasn't killed. The lady and her son that had Down syndrome. I felt sorry for that little boy. You know, when people, kids have Down syndrome, they don't take well to instant changes in their lives and so when her airbags come out see my airbags didn't employ hers did and smacked that little boy in the face oh and and he was crying and screaming and and I'd go I went over there and sat down by him and was talking to him and trying to get him calm down and the ambulance come and they were examining him cuz and then after Everybody was gone, and she's standing there, and she's asking me if I'm okay. And I said, yes, I'm okay. I'm fine. But do me a favor. Take your son to the emergency room and have him rechecked out to make sure he's okay. Because Down syndrome children are very delicate. And I just wanted to know for sure that he was okay. Because I would get Toyo to take care of him too. But he's okay. She called me and let me know. Nothing was broken. Everything's okay. He was just, the doctor explained it was such a sudden trauma that it, he was just scared to death. Blessed little boy. So. Pray for him. I don't know his name. I didn't get his name. But anyway, pray for him that God will heal him. You know, 
people don't understand when they're praying. You know, we've been taught from childhood, if you got a need, pray for it. If you got an enemy, you know, pray for that enemy to be defeated. I mean, really, we've been taught that crap in church. Why do I call it crap? Because it's not the Word of God. It's really not. Jesus taught us to forgive and pray goodness on people, not hate and anger and bitterness. We need to learn this. If you're going to be part of the bride, the body of Christ, you need to learn to listen to Him and do what He tells you to do. Not what other people tell you to do, or what they get out of the Bible and destroy it to their, their way of thinking. Because that will be their downfall. Evil is upon this earth, people. I mean, we see it in ISIS. Satan turned them loose over there. There's some over here in America, but people turned them loose over there. Many of them. And if you're a Christian and they find you, they will cut your head off. They're cutting children's heads off from Christian families. Now, Obama tries to say they don't believe in Islam. Oh, yes, they do. And they worship Allah, which means in Hebrew, a curse. So just praying to him and speaking his name is putting a curse on them. But... Um, People that are over, overseas, over in the European countries, Africa and around, are really walking on dangerous ground. They're in danger, more so than America. Now, I know God is going to judge America. There's going to be some earthquakes that's going to be devastating and things over here. But ISIS is over there. And if you're in if you are a Christian, if you believe in Jesus Christ and his blood to covering you, you are in danger. I plead the blood over you. I plead your protection over you. But as ISIS grows, which is the horde of Satan, and more and more people are joining them from other countries. The people that are over there in those countries are in danger of getting their head cut off. I don't think it would matter if you stand out there and put your hand up and rebuke them and start praying o over them. They'll just walk up, grab you by the hair of the head, jerk you down, take a knife, split your throat, and cut your head off. I I'm trying to be very honest. It's more dangerous over there than over here right now. And it's going to grow more and more dangerous over there. I can see why now God didn't want me to move over there and live over there. Let me see who these people are. Hello? Hello? Okay. I just love those telemarketing things, and they're not human. They just, and there's no way to interrupt them, you know, or just hang up on them. But anyway, <laughs> I felt like saying this to her because she is overseas. 
Don't know where she's at. Have no idea. She's in the midst of all of this stuff with the ISIS and Ebola going on. Um, we've got had Ebola patients over here, but we haven't got Ebola running wild like it is over in Africa and over in other countries overseas. I, I don't know why Elizabeth felt so strong to go over there because she kept saying America was going to be destroyed. Well, as my grandmother, bless her heart, would say, sometimes we jump out of the frying pan into the fire, and I think that's what she did. She's over there in the midst of all of this stuff. While God had told me, no, Barbara, don't go with them. Don't you go overseas. You're not to go over there. America is not going to be totally destroyed. There are going to be more dead people laying all over the place overseas than here in America. Well, I, I admit I didn't tell Elizabeth what God told me. I just said, no, we can't go. But God always protects his children. And tell me, I, I'll tell you, I really wanted to go with her. I, I, I loved her and I wanted to travel with her. But God said no. <clears throat> because he didn't even tell her to go. She was running because of crimes that she had done here and the law and the FBI was looking for her because especially what she did in California so sometimes when you get in trouble and you're running you make poor judgments That's all I can say. Now, I know a lot of her people over there don't know what happened over here, and they don't really believe me when I say that she did these things. And one of the main things is when she went and did what she did to that vet in California, stole his property and sold it, and I mean, did a lot of things, okay, with the help of the vet's wife. Um, which it was mentally ill, needed to be a mental institution. You can ma manipulate sometimes mentally ill people to do a lot of things. But she did that and stole the money and, and um, it was a mess because even the FBI called here and talked to me. and. Um, I just told them the truth, what I know, because I didn't know a whole lot, because I had already come back home before a lot of this got carried away. So I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't testify against her to a lot of things. But she stood out there deceiving people, young people. People, you need to quit following people. If you're following me because of me, God forgive you. You need to follow Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. So, because see, I'm not God, and I'm not Jesus. I didn't die for you. God created you, and Jesus died for you. So, quit following people. Get the Bible, read the Bible, and pray sincerely to Him, because we are in dangerous times. Now, I can't save you when the danger and evil comes upon you. I can't save you, but Jesus can. God the Father can. They both can protect you in ways that I can't. Elizabeth can't. She's over there hiding out somewhere. Scared to death that someday someone 
maybe like me, will walk up, knock on her door, and say, I found you. Which I'm not looking for, don't want to even find her. I just leave her to God. I pray that she gets on her knees and asks for forgiveness. That's what I do. And I know some of you people, when you tell me what she says, <clears throat> like this person that let me know that she said that Jesus did that for her. Well, she's a liar. You know, Satan's a liar. And the children of Satan are liars because their father's a liar. Jesus did not cause this wreck. In fact, he protected all three of us that was involved in that wreck. Me, the lady that was driving the Mustang, and her son, who has Down syndrome. Nobody, no broken bones, no one got cut, no blood. Everybody got out of cars, walked around, and were fine. I mean, how awesome is that? That God protected us with such a violent wreck. I mean, she T-boned me. <laughs> Bless her heart. But we were all fine. Nobody, e even the, the paramedics that come up in the ambulance and examine us, they, they said, how did, nobody got hurt in this wreck. And it, it's a pretty bad wreck. How did that happen? Everybody is fine. No broken bones. No nothing. And I sat there and I talked to the paramedic and said, Well, you know, when I looked down the road and my car was dead, and I seen the car coming, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, protect both of these cars and everybody in it. Protect us all and let no harm come to us. And guess what? No harm come to us. Okay, I lost a car. Fine. My insurance is going to pay it off. Toyota is going to pay me money because it was their fault. You know, they've been having trouble with their cars, so... <laughs> Just another one of their cars on a long list that has problems. So, so I, I'm going to come out as a win-win situation all the way around, you know. I didn't physically get hurt. My car, the bill for my car is going to be gone. I won't have to pay my bill because it's going to be paid off. And Toyota has offered me a new car or, or, um, or uh, money, and I'm going to take money because I'm praying that it will be enough money to pay the pickup off and have money to take me and Tina to Israel, get tickets to go to Israel on um, the Feast of Tabernacles, the last blood red moon next year in the fall and I believe that's what he's going to do because I believe I'm supposed to go over there and witness to those people so don't think I'm saying I'm one of the witnesses we all are witnesses of Jesus Christ we are all witnesses now I know there's two main witnesses coming it's not going to be Elizabeth or some other people that keep claiming, well, I'm one of the wit. No, you're not. Excuse me. I'm sorry. 
The witnesses will show up over there, but uh, they've already been born once and they're being held in reserve because that's the reason why they were taken alive. Because you only have once to die. And when they die, they will die over there in the streets of Jerusalem when the beast comes up from the pit and kills them. And I'm not one of them. They're still in heaven. Excuse me. So don't let anybody fool you on that. I've seen a lot of messages saying they're already here. No, they're not here. No, 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 no. They're not here. But they will be here soon. Maybe it be on the last full moon that they start come down. God sends them down and they start their witnessing to Jerusalem. But we are in the last days, so much is going to happen. And I do know the reason why I'll be over there, part of it, is because of the 144,000 that's going to be called out soon. Sealed and called out from Israel. The 144,000. Now, I know she tries to teach that the bride is 144,000. Well, then that means that if the bride is 144,000, that means they're all Israelites. No. The 144,000 is not the bride. It is from every tribe of Israel. 12,000 from every tribe, making 144,000. And they're going to come forth and stand forth for a pure fact to lead the rest of Israel into coming to know who Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the true Messiah, is. And it will take them to do that. And that's one of the things I was talking to them about, the two that I met at the mall here in Fayetteville. And they become excited. I showed it to them in the Bible, and they become so excited, and they accepted it, and they believed it. And they said, "My, our people need to know this so they can get ready to come out and be part of this. So I'm just saying, pray for me. If anybody wants to help finance me and Tina, well... Praise the Lord. It will be God's will. If not, then God will bring me the money otherwise. You know. Since uh, Elizabeth Group made that one video saying that I was a scammer trying to scam people. See, that's the main reason why I, I don't like to ask people for money because other people say, oh, she's just a scammer, when they themselves are the biggest scammers. You see, my husband gets a VA check, I get a Social Security check, and then he gets a Social Security disability check. So I don't need to ask people for money to just to live on, which Elizabeth and Paul does. Neither one of them works. All the money they get to live on the money that buys the food they eat, pays the rent wherever they rent, is from you guys. They live off of you guys. I consider them much like Benny Hinn, living off of people, getting richer, living in fancy homes, eating fancy food, dressing in fancy clothes. And I, I'm sorry. I just don't go for that. I don't live in a fancy home or in the lap of luxury. I live in an old trailer house. But it does belong to me and my husband. When he got his VA check, we paid off the trailer and the land. And Carl had thought about building a brand new house here. And I went, no. Jesus... My bridegroom is already building a house in heaven, far better than anything here on earth. 
And I told him, I am satisfied. I am satisfied here. I don't want something fancy here on earth. My treasures aren't here anyway. Don't want it. I'm content where I'm at. I'm content because I am protected by the hand of God, by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, and filled with the spirit of the Ruh Kadesh. I am content. I am physically well. I don't have any diseases. I get around, I do my own work, <clears throat> right now, if you can hear it, you can hear the washing machine going, I'm washing clothes. Thanksgiving will be here soon and I'm going to clean house and, and cook a big meal for <clears throat> my son, his wife, and two grandsons. Tina and her daughter will come over. Fatima, a black lady we know, will come over. Uh, Kurt and Trish will come over. So far, I have nine people that are coming to Thanksgiving dinner. I will cook that Thanksgiving dinner because I'm fine. I'm well. I'm healthy. And I can't complain. I can't complain. So what? The wreck happened. Jesus didn't cause it. A glitch in the motor of Toyota, which they're having many. Man, oh man. I mean, they've been having so many glitches in their motors, and so many people have actually been killed in their cars because of what's going wrong with them. I was protected. The lady in her Mustang and her son was protected. And nobody was hurt. Nobody was killed. Nobody was hurt. We are truly blessed. So I will end this by asking you all to really, really hold Elizabeth up in prayer. If that makes her angry, so be it. But remember this, when you pray for others, for their deliverance and their protection, it makes Satan mad. But who cares that Satan gets mad? She's a human being. Do you really want to see her die and go to hell? That's my question. Do you really, really, really want to see Elizabeth, Elijah, and Paul, who did leave his family behind and deserted them for her, do you really want them to die and go to hell? I don't. Do you really, really want any of her group to die and go to hell? I don't. So let's pray for this group. That they will seek forgiveness. Bless you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Remember, we are in the end days. Yeshua is coming soon. Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Messiah, it's coming back to earth soon. Get your heart right. Repent. Repent. 